Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch One. Thanks for logging on. Today, we're looking at a watch that's fairly near and dear to my heart in as much as it is one of Gisher Lecoultre's iconic modern models based heavily on a grand tradition of watchmaking in the history of the Grand Maison. This is the Gisher Lecoultre Master 8 Days, 41.5 millimeters in 18 karat rose gold. This watch continues the long tradition since the early 20th century of Gisher Lecoultre manufacture eight day movements and it's got a great backstory because the latest eight day movement has what is possibly the ultimate watchmaking pedigree first and foremost let's put it on the wrist and get an impression of it now at 41.5 millimeters it's remarkably thin only about 11 and a half millimeters thick it sits broad and flat on the wrist not too wide not too thick just right as a dress watch you can see uh, the side profile displays the amount of tumble home from the top of the crystal to the flanks of the case. So moving up and over that is quite a simple feat for any sleeve. Dress cuffs. This is an excellent dress watch, not just in appearance, but in its compatibility with the rest of your attire. Easy to wear on my 6 and a third inch wrist, that's 16 centimeters for those using System International. The watch is nice and comfortable and beautifully complementary to just about any natural skin tone. The bottom line is the 18 karat rose gold is warm, becoming, and with corresponding 18 karat rose gold applied numerals, indexes, and alpha hands, the watch is altogether just a little bit more approachable than the rather chilly all-silver, all-white metal stainless steel variant. Now these watches debuted back in 2004, and they were the culmination of geez, a long project Five years of movement development, two years of watch development. The five years of movement development went into the caliber 877 eight-day movement that powers this watch. Although it fits great, it looks great, the real story is the case back and the back story that informs the case back. Gisher Lecoultre started working on a new eight-day movement in the late 1990s. The idea was that with the 70th anniversary of the iconic Reverso coming up, they wanted a running start on an advanced modern movement that would consider all of the history of the brand and incorporate it into one grand showpiece for JLC's watchmaking capabilities. And the result of that was the caliber 879. Swan's neck regulator, twin barrels, eight days of power reserve, everything that you see here essentially but for $94,000. That movement went into the 70th anniversary Reverso, the Septantième, that debuted counterintuitively one year after the 70th anniversary in 2002. Why did it debut late? Well, because it just took so darn long to make the movement work properly. The complexity, the expense, and the effort expended in developing that movement inspired JLC to release a line of round watches using the same watchmaking technology, incorporating the same feature sets. And that is to the advantage of all those who either prefer not to wear a Reverso or don't have $94,000 to spend on one. Thus, we get the Master 8 Days, 18 karat rose gold, 41 and a half millimeters, and it's caliber 877 movement. Now, if you look at this watch and you frame it just like so, you can actually see, in a lot of ways, the reverso in the XGT case. All of these complications are arranged exactly like so on the Septantium's dial. And again, the Septantium was the flagship of the JLC manufacturer, but everything functionally that you get in that watch, you get in this watch plus the versatility of a round watch with the warmth of rose gold. The Setantium was a platinum piece, a little bit chilly, a little bit austere. This is far more approachable. And again, you're getting the same caliber of watchmaking because this watch features everything that one does, but in a round shape. That's one of the hallmarks of high horology. Can you build a movement that is specific to the size and the shape of a case? It's one thing to have a movement that can do the job, but JLC is one of the few manufacturers, along with the likes of Patek Philippe, Zenith, uh, perhaps Rolex, that's really capable of building a movement in the shape and size of the case in which it's placed designing to suit, not the other way around. And you can see the focal point, as with all JLC watches, is that beating heart. Beautiful swan's neck regulator for precise adjustments, precise rate adjustments. It also features resistance to shock, so that if you do happen to, for whatever reason, slam a car door, rush to grab an elevator button, and you jolt the watch while wearing it, it's not going to move that little stick index that changes the rate of the balance. And as the focal point of the movement, you see that these 
Côte de Soleil, basically Geneva waves, but radiating outward from a centralized point. They move from the balance outward, broadening as they fan out across the movement. They also feature a beautiful, discrete graining that adds texture and visual interest in between the crests of the coats. Cobalt blued screws, a specialty of the manufacturer, not just true heat-oxidized, kiln-fired blued screws. Some companies try to get away with chemically blued screws that look a sickening electric blue. These are not just the real deal, fired in a kiln, but take a look at this. The movement is affixed to the case with blued screws. I can't tell you how many watchmakers use cobalt blued movement screws to secure the movement. It's one thing to assemble the movement with that degree of quality, but to use them to fix the movement to the case, that's the ultimate imprimatur of a great manufacturer and thoughtful watchmaking. Beyond that, there's also a great deal of beautiful anglage. All of the bridges are drawn, and there's a discrete level of rounding off of all of the edges to remove the birth scars from the CNCing of the pieces. A beautiful touch, most evident under the loop. This watch really rewards close viewing, and if you do, you'll even see that in the narrow channel between these bridges, and there aren't many, the main spring barrels take up most of the geography of the movement under the bridges, but you can see a nice tight, even perlage pattern. It's a gorgeous watch to examine on the case back, although, again, the main spring barrels do sort of dominate the bridges and, I, I would say, crowd out some of the other visual diversity of something that has a smaller power reserve. What you're getting in return is a beautifully articulated expanse that serves as a showcase for those gorgeous Cote de Soleil. And then, of course, the focal point being the star right here. You won't regret, you won't regret close examination of this balance. There's a lot going on between the micro-regulator, the swan's neck, and the gorgeous perlage pattern beneath. The finish is up to par with the engineering. Now, the face of the watch is easy to read and legible. Signature elements include the day-night indicator, small seconds at 4.30, a grand date, JLC's second, and I'll get to that in a second, and a power reserve gauge out to eight days. Now, what's interesting is that it takes only 50 turns of the crown to fully energize that eight-day power reserve. Just for comparison, it takes 40 turns of the crown to energize the 48 to 50-hour power reserve of your standard Rolex Sea Dweller or Submariner. So there's a tremendous, I would say, intuition for convenience, for user-friendly design at Gégeur Lecoult. 50 turns to fully energize eight days. If you want to know how other watchmakers do it, consider that on the five-day power reserve of the, on the Blancpain 50 Fathoms, you actually have to turn the crown 108 times to get those five days of power reserve. If you extrapolate that out to the JLC, you could be spinning for a while. But why spin your wheels when you can appreciate this gorgeous visage? And a highlight of that, just below the power reserve, is this grand date, double digital. Each digit jumps separately in turn. Now, this was the second one the JLC designed. This one uses only two primary wheels without the intermediate program wheel featured in their first. Why don't they use that first anymore? Well, because they gave it to their sister company, Alango Unzuna, as a sort of hand-me-down. That went on to become an icon of modern German watchmaking, and while it remains beautiful and fine, JLC saved the latest generation for itself. And you can see it on this Gégeur Lecoult Master 8 Days. Again, 41.5 millimeters in rose gold. This is an outstanding, complicated dress watch with an impeccable watchmaking pedigree. It has the heart not just of a champion, but of the Septantium, one of JLC's all-time greats, both aesthetically and from an engineering perspective. You get all of that, but in a watch that doesn't cost as much as a decent house. You also get a beautiful round watch profile. For those who find that rectangular watches, for whatever reason, don't fit their style or don't basically play nice with their wrist, there are those shaping issues every once in a while. This is the perfect combination of that awesome movement in a more conventional, more approachable, visually warm case. So check out the Gégeur Lecoult Master 8 Days on our website, Watch You Want. 100% complete, complete with all Gégeur Lecoult boxes, manuals, documents of provenance. You can see it on our website, and I have a feeling that if you like complications, watchmaking content, wonderful history, and elegance, this is the Watch You Want.